today we're talking about Nouvelle Escura self-titled 12-inch LP that was released on January 22nd or 26, 2019. All right, so why don't we get started? This came out, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I, Bandcamp says January 22nd, and the, uh, the ZBR website says the 26th of 2019, so who knows? I'm going to go with the Bandcamp one, because that was when it was published. Uh, this is a pretty big story. I mean, it basically goes back to 2016, when the band was still called Vril, and uh, Marcel from, uh, what are they called? Uh, well, uh, Left Astray? Uh, the bass player from that. So I, I'd, I'd met them on tour, uh, played with Left Astray twice or three times uh, when when I was in Miatej. So we had met and they knew that like I did a blog and everything like that. So when, was it No Traditions, I think, came out in 2016, I reviewed it. Uh, I still remember sitting in the Immigrant Working Center uh, writing the review while people were taking tests upstairs and I had to like make sure that no one else came in to had to, had to take the test and go upstairs. Anyway, eh, tangent. So, uh, I was aware of the band through that, uh, and then... We're done the past the rings for it. The, uh, the Yarrow 12, uh, 10-inch four-way split that came out uh, has Vril on it. These three songs are the last three songs that they wrote before they changed to Nouvelle Escura. So, if you want uh, more Nouvelle Escura, especially stuff that's very close to the album that we're talking about, check the three songs on this. They're fantastic. Uh, still copies in stock. Co-release with Middleman. Now, uh, let's continue on, shall we? So, uh, Aware, yes, I didn't really know the band members or anything like that. Uh, they had gone through a couple of different vocalists. I think they were on their third by the time that that album had come out. Now, I went to that CU Space Cowboy show back in 2000, would have been 2017, or 2018, I guess. And while I was there, uh, Dom, who is in Nouvelle Escure, the guitar player, was playing in CU Space Cowboy at that time. So we got to talking, and I remember at some point we were outside, and Dom was like, I play in this other band and I have an album that uh, I'm going to send your way, if that's okay, in a few months. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. I, maybe I didn't make the connection, I don't know. So basically, months went by, I'd pretty much forgotten about it, and then I got this email with, uh, with this LP. I'm like, hey, here's the LP. Uh, our, our friend Marcel in uh, Sombras del Progreso is going to be co-releasing it. Do you want to, uh, to help release this? And I remember listening to it once, and uh, listening to it once, and just being very blown away. I was like, I definitely want to help release this. I want to listen again. And I think before I'd finished the first song, the second time through, I was like, I am going to contact uh, them and say, we don't need any more labels. Uh, I don't think I've ever been so confident in something uh, upon hearing it that uh, even at that point where I was struggling to sell and release stuff, it's like this, this is a ZBR release. I want this, you know, I, I, I wanted this release and I was really happy that I was able to, to get it from going to that one show in, in Seattle all those years ago led me to, uh, to Dom and Nouvelle Escuro. That's pretty awesome. Um, uh, so they, I guess like this album, they began writing in 2016. So it was a long time coming. It was essentially two and a half to three years of writing and then recording uh, before it got to us. Uh, later that year, let's just talk about it now because I'm going to forget otherwise, uh, they played uh, ZBR Fest. So I figured it was an excuse to show the posters for, for these. So I had someone uh, make this. I forget their name. Uh, they did a great job. Um, I actually really, really like this one with the uh, the bird skeletons inside and stuff. And the coloring, shading, very nice. And then uh, Dove and Miggy from Emo Cats uh, had individual little poster things that they handed at the show. So this was the first one. Uh, and their, ba their band played that show too. So it was Diva Plava Laguna, Senza, Nuvo Lascura, L, and uh, one might even say the, the, the famous Juliet uh, set that was played at ZBR Fest where uh, there was just a lot of people... Minds blown. Uh, Mark from Massonera talks about it. It just got released today, saying that uh, Azael is like one of the most influential persons for their drumming 
Um, and it was when they saw them at at ZBR Fest. They, you watch the video of, of them playing, and it's just everyone in the audience like, what is happening? Uh, so it's pretty cool. Uh, at that ZBR Fest, I had misplaced my camera for a Nouveau Lascura set. I couldn't have been more excited to see the band, so I was so bummed when I had to use my crap phone to take a video of them playing. So you'll notice if you watch the ZBR videos from that fest in 2019, uh, that the Nouveau Lascura videos are super blown out and just sound really, really weird. It's because I was using my, my, my cell phone. Same thing happened with Jillian Carter this past year in Chicago. Oh! Anyway. Uh, also, er, was um, Erica, the vocalist, uh, had her passport stolen uh, while in Vancouver. Uh, someone just like broke into their vehicle and uh, and swiped it. So she had a very important medical appointment that she needed to go to in the states and essentially couldn't get back over the border. So that was a bit of a de debacle, we'll say. But everything worked out okay. She got back. She got to her appointment. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, unfortunate incident, most definitely. So to continue on, before this came out, uh, there were three re single releases, essentially. There was, uh, well, actually, no, let's go back even further. Dave Cullen uh, kind of made, I'm like, hey, you're a video guy. Make a little teaser thing for Nuva Lascura. So he took a video off YouTube with a house burning, uh, uh, like a dollhouse burning outside in the nighttime and put uh, one of the songs over it for, I don't even know, like 30 seconds and definitely caught people's interest. That was November 26th that that was put on YouTube. And then we had the first single come out on December 18th. That was Flower Offering, uh, one of the, definitely one of the most popular tracks off of this album, the third track. And uh, that was, uh, yeah, that was on Open Mind Saturated Brain on December 18th. And then on January 1st, there was the Half Truth premiere that happened on the uh, Zampler number 12 that uh, just talked about uh, definitely like something that I use as a separator for the before and after uh, both kind of like Dave Cullen coming to ZBR but but definitely like I feel like this is I guess the third era there's the unknown era and then there was the respire and like see you space cowboy was called the metalcore era where there were some bands that got bigger uh, and then I think this really does mark the move into current ZBR stuff. Uh, a lot of bands repeat releases over over years, uh, not breaking up, continuing to tour, getting to getting to meet them at fests and stuff like that, and shows. It's been very cool. So I this, can't stress how important this release is uh, for ZBR. So we had that first single, and then there was the the Zampler, and then the third single was uh, Saccharin Trance on No Echo. That was January 18th. So we had a pretty good lead up, like November, December, uh, January 1st, January 18th, and then it came out, whatever, 22nd uh, of January. So that was pretty good. Uh, we should mention that it was mixed and mastered by Jack Shirley, and uh, Jack Shirley has worked on a, a couple things with ZBR and so forth, and uh, this was the first, and I think perhaps the only time that I got an email saying, oh my god, I just recorded this band, and I heard you're releasing it, please save me a copy, <laughs> I want to buy a copy. So that was pretty cool, like Jack Shirley was thoroughly impressed to the point where he was uh, emailing to ensure that he was able to obtain a copy before they sold out, because I think he knew it was going to be a banger. Uh, so yeah, so we did 200 copies for the first press with the, uh, the art from Sean Leary. Uh, I love this art. I love the color scheme. It works out really well with the, the back, so we didn't need to include an insert or anything. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, yeah, just straight up love that. The first press, as I said, is on black, and I think it's worth noting that, um, I hand stamped each one of these suckers with uh, three things which I still have. My uh, old ZBR stamp, I put Nouvel Escura on the side, uh, and then had these other two things made for the track listing. So just post them down. It took a while. Um, and then at one point, by accident, I double stamped one, and I realized, oh, that creates like a cool little shadow effect. Uh, so I definitely inc have incorporated that to this day uh, with stamping, and I'm a very big fan of it. Okay, it's been released 12 inches, uh, 12 inches sold so fast. Holy moly, uh, like I was saying, I knew, it feels, felt so good to, to, to know that this was gonna do really well and then it did really well. It really helped solidify 
my belief in my own taste in music, essentially. And just be, just don't listen to other people. Just do what you think is right, and it'll probably work out. And it's, uh, it's done pretty well for me. So, and again, th this release is a is a, a, a blatant reminder that that I was making the right calls. At this point, no funeral records, uh, and Nate had just kind of started up, at least in terms of releasing Screamo, and was asking if I wanted to co-release anything, and I knew I wanted to do this one, uh, at least in Canada and stuff, by myself, so uh, I tossed him, and asked the band, of course, uh, if he wanted to release the cassette version. So the very first cassette release version, and the only one with a white cover, is put up by New F No Funeral. I don't remember if it's like, it's like 50 or 100 copies. Um, anyway, long, long sold out. Now, because this whole thing sold out uh, relatively quickly, we then did a second press. Uh, I think the band was set to tour the UK in 2020, so Dog Nights jumped on the second press of this album and ended up being co-releasing European Party for the next LP that came out a year or two later. So we, not we, uh, the band and Sean Leary decided to re-envision the art. That's the same one. And kind of did like a reverse uh, black thing here with, uh, well, it's not reverse, it's just, it's black with white on it. it is, it's very, very cool. And I like this one also, and it's, I've got the t-shirt for, oh man, that smells of paint. Why does it smell of paint? I'll tell you in a second. Uh, so, second press was out of 300. All 300 of those ones are on white. Uh, didn't do any of the hand stamp stuff. Those were pressed in a different facility in Europe. In Europe, yeah, Dog Nights uh, got them. This was essentially, this was the album that broke the tie that I had with a pressing plant as we were talking about asking for a repress and my rep just basically didn't do anything or respond. Uh, so what happened next? Then I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe we can like grab the stamper from them so we don't have to, to pay for a new stamper because we've already had these made, they're just sitting there. Uh, and again, I got a month, essentially, of just no responses. So I had to go to his boss, Tristan, you suck. Uh, and his boss uh, helped me out, and I just I didn't press anything there for a long time. Uh, but eventually we started pressing there again. Uh, Dave Cullen uh, started ordering through there and had a different rep. So everything has really been fine since then. So uh, we, uh, we changed the art, we pressed those ones. I did um, some tapes, and the first run of tapes were actually given away free with ZBR orders, I think over like 20 bucks or something, so I have no idea, there's no data that I have around here, I guess I could probably check my book, um, about how many of each of these were made, so uh, maybe that's just a test one, I feel like there were a fair amount of these, these like golden, blue, black, and gray ones, I haven't been able to find the gray in forever, like... So, I mean, like those. Uh, oh, I think it's also important to note that at this point, uh, using the stamper, I think this is the first time I ever stamped a squirrel tape. Um, at least with like a more proper stamp as opposed to like just an A and a B stamp. And it was because I had it already made for the, the record. I'm like, oh, let's give it a shot. Worked out pretty well. So I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a test one. The other two look much more, or th this one in particular, I think is was the primary one. Now, uh, eventually the band needed more tapes, so I ordered another 50 tapes. Uh, there's still a couple of these ones left. I think there's one or two 12 inches left. The rest of them went back to the band uh, after we sold a fair amount. And I think they are now, if no, they're not sold out, they're almost sold out. So you should probably get one. Uh, here I tried to recreate the shadowy stamp for the yellow. There was 20 of the yellow. Mm, there were... I believe 20 of these uh, yellow ones with a with a double stamp. There's a white and a black. Maybe the first time I ever tried two colors. I was very impressed with how it worked. And then there's 10 of these, whatever they're called, blue, green, golden, whatever. Anyway, so uh, I think there was like 10 of those. Uh, there were no test, no, no test tips for those ones. Uh, I don't think I was doing test tips, maybe at this point. Maybe that's what it was. Is there anything else to talk about? There is, there's this. 
uh, there there weren't enough covers with the first press. So I was short three covers, and I had all of those additional Envy covers, the ones that at least uh, did not get destroyed. So I had, you know, whatever, uh, a couple extra, and I decided to paint them. So there's there's four of these Overs edition, which are like super rare. Uh, got a little Dave Norman signature on the back. But like I got number three of four. I think they sold for like 40 bucks or something when I first made them. Uh, this... This was the, the the pilot, if you will, the test one. Uh, I essentially just got some very special paints, and I I put them down, and I just did this for a while, and then I may or may not have used a toothpick. No, I don't think I did at all. Um, but I mean, honestly, it looks pretty nice. The other uh, three are very different from this. Each one is pretty unique in terms of like the paint style. One of them is, I think, like a line across that then drips down. I don't even remember what the other ones are. Uh, maybe if someone's got it, they can they can post it underneath so we can see, because I don't even remember what they look like. Is there anything else to talk about? We should probably talk about the podcast that they were on, because uh, that was really funny and just a good time. You can look, check it out on YouTube. There's a thing where they talk about uh, their best show of all time and them finishing before 10 o'clock and everyone chanting like 9.59, like 10 o'clock or whatever. It, it, it's a good listen. There's two of the 12 inches left, and then they're completely gone. There are no plans immediately to repress them. Dog Nights is on hiatus. We'll have to see what happens, uh, whether we do another press in the future. We are, uh, there's even discussions of doing a uh, something more, we'll say. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. I don't really know. Uh, there's a couple tapes left, uh, maybe one or two. And what is next? I didn't check. Oh, right. Next is the Modern Rifles uh, cassette that maybe in some ways has no business being on Zegma Beach because there's no screaming or anything, but hot dog, do I love Mimi some Modern Rifles, and that album in particular is just fantastic. So uh, we'll talk about that one next time, but uh, and, 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 until next time, uh, this what? is Nuvo. Nuvo is named after Nuvo Lascara. And he is a special white, I don't know, Siamese cat. Pretty rare. He's super affectionate, though. We call him Instapur.